Polynomial long division. To understand how to divide polynomials, let's remember how to just divide. So we have 297 divided by 14. Do you remember how to do this? We say 14 goes into 29 how many times? Well, 14 times 2 is 28. Yeah, let's do that. Put the 2 above that 9, and then 2 times 14 is 28. We write it under the 29, and then we subtract. There you go, the big thing, subtract. 28 from 29 is 1, bring down our 7, and then 14 goes into 17 one time. Multiply 1 times 14, subtract, and we have 3 left over. Now, we're not in elementary school, so we're not going to say remainder 3. No, we're going to say 3 divided by 14, because we still haven't divided 3 by 14. So we have 21 and 3 fourteenths. Let's try example B. Notice that 7 goes into 4,508 evenly, so it's a factor of 4,508. Next, let's apply this to long division with polynomials. So we have the, the 2x cubed polynomial being divided by the 2x plus 5. So we still set it up the same. The 2x plus 5 goes outside, and then we put that big polynomial inside the box. Let's go. We want to look at just the first term of each polynomial. So I have this 2x and I need to go into 2x cubed. For our purposes, we're really going to think about like 2x times what gives me 2x cubed. Or you can think 2x cubed divided by 2x, x squared. So that means we want to multiply 2x plus 5 by x squared. We have to distribute that x squared into the binomial. So we're going to go ahead x squared times 2x, I get 2x cubed. If those aren't the same, then I did something wrong, start all over, right? But then I also have to multiply the x squared into the 5, so plus 5x squared. Whew, all right. Do you remember the process now? The next step was to subtract. So the most common error here is to forget to subtract, to, to subtract that second term, to distribute the minus sign. So let's make sure that we're very obvious with those subtraction signs. Alrighty, so 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, gone. That's what we wanted. Negative 7x squared minus 5x squared, so negative 12x squared. Then what's the next step in the process? Bring down. So we're going to bring down that 12x. Okay, now we repeat the process. So we're still looking at that 2x, the first term of the binomial, going into the first term of what's in that next part of the polynomial that we're dividing into. So negative 12x squared. So over here on my think section, I can think negative 12x squared divided by that 2x, because I really want to say 2x times what? equals negative 12x squared. Well, that's going to be a negative 6x. So that's the next term that I'll multiply into the binomial. So minus 6x goes above that negative 12x, and then we distribute into the 2x plus 5. I'm going to continue to make a big deal about that subtraction sign. So we're going to subtract both terms. Notice that when I get to that minus a negative 30x, that means I'm actually going to be adding the 30x. So negative 12x squared plus 12x squared, negative 12x plus 30x. And now we're almost done. 2x plus 5 into 18x plus 45. Do you remember what we think? We think, how many times does 2x go into 18x? Well, that's going to be 9. Woohoo! Remainder 0. There's nothing left over. What does that tell us about 2x plus 5? It tells us that 2x plus 5 is a factor of that larger cubic polynomial. As a way of checking our division, we could now multiply the 2x plus 5 into the x squared minus 6x plus 9. Also, if we were wanting to get fully factored form, we could take this and now factor the trinomial and have fully factored form. Let's try this next one. Same idea. x squared times what gives me 3x to the fourth? So think 3x to the fourth divided by x squared. 3x squared. Now I'm going to distribute, multiply into the binomial, 3x squared times x squared, 3x to the fourth. 3x squared times 1 is 3x squared. Squared. Wait a second, I have an x cubed term in this polynomial. What's going on? Oh, sometimes.
times we need to go back and save a space. So notice that I went from x squared, no x term, and then a one. So I need to go ahead, let's rewrite this really quick. Actually, when I was rewriting it, I noticed that I was also missing the x term in the other polynomial. So keep in mind that you may have to put in zeros for any time you are missing one of the terms. Nice thing about division, long division, is you'll notice it because it won't match up. So let's go ahead back to where we were. We're going to multiply by 3x squared. Distribute into now the trinomial. Do yourself a favor, really do something distinct to show that subtraction. Change colors, show that you're subtracting each term. Go ahead and finish this problem, come back and check in with me. Here we have a binomial left over. So x squared plus one is not a factor of that larger polynomial. How do we write the remainder? We write it showing that it still needs to be divided. So three x squared minus four x plus nine plus four x minus four divided by x squared plus one. Woohoo, I think we have the hang of this. Number three, let's go ahead. I think you got this. Do it, check back with me. Four x plus three plus negative 31 divided by x plus five. Whoa, 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 wait a second. I think I have a quicker way to do that problem. Okay, okay, I got this. Look at that. I mean, we could have clocked it. I beat you there. Hey, um, they haven't learned well, let's learn synthetic division. So since I was dividing by a linear factor of one x plus five, I take the zero for that factor. So x plus five equals zero, subtract five, I get x equals negative five. So I set that up right here. Then I take my coefficients of the polynomial I'm dividing into. So that's the four, the 23, the negative 16. And I go and I start doing some really cool synthetic division. I bring down that four, multiply the four by the negative five, I get negative 20. I add down, multiply, add down until I run out of terms. The reason we like synthetic division is because it's adding now instead of subtracting. So I don't have any of that little mistake. And then if we look, when I am done, I have this four, which is the four X from my answer. Then I have this three, which is that plus three from my answer. And then that negative 31 left is my remainder. Hmm, let's try it. So let me break this down a little bit more in example five. Okay, so I've got my polynomial that's a cubic and I'm dividing it by a linear factor where I have that one X minus three. Okay, so to set it up, I kind of set up a little box here. I have a line, a little box here, okay. In this box right here, I'm gonna put my zero. So x minus three equal to zero is three if I add the three to the other side. So that's what I'm gonna set up there. Now parallel to that is my coefficients to the polynomial I'm dividing into. So I've got two x cubed, right? Then I got my negative three x squared. Then I got my negative 11 x and then my positive six. Now if I was missing any of those exponents, it has to go x cubed to x to the zero. So sometimes what I do is I'll set them up at the top so that I don't accidentally forget one. All right, so now I'm gonna bring down that two like I talked about before, and I start to multiply. Two times three is six. Then I get to add down. That's the beauty of synthetic division, adding. So negative three plus six is three, and then I just repeat the same process. Multiply three times three is nine. Then I add down, negative 11 plus nine is two, negative two. Then I do it again, repeat the process. Negative two times three is negative six. I add down and I get a zero. Now I'm out of terms, I've completed my synthetic division. 
Well, that zero is in the remainder spot. So what does it mean if I have a remainder of zero? It means that x minus three is a factor of this polynomial. That's awesome, but I don't even have a, a, a leftover polynomial, a quotient. So what I need to do is I need to take these, this two, this three, and this negative two, and those are my coefficients for my quotient. So two x cubed was being divided by x. So that means the leading term is gonna be x squared, because if I divide x cubed by x, I get x squared. So I have two x squared, and then I'm just gonna decrease by one exponent each time. So plus three x, because x to the one power, and then minus two x to the zero power. And then I don't have a remainder, so I can just write it that way. But does this factor out any further? I think it does. Let's use crisscross. So that polynomial factors out into 2x minus 1, x plus 2, and then the original factor was x minus 3. So this big polynomial up here can be factored into x minus 3, 2x minus 1, and x plus 2. Woo! This is cool. Okay, why don't you set example 6 up? Synthetic division. Okay, let's check your setup. Does yours look like mine? That's a problem. We definitely can't have that happen, right? What did I forget? This is an x to the fourth power. So that means I need a place for x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and x to the zero. Well, awesome. I have a place for my x to the fourth, my x squared, and my x to the zero, but I don't have my x to the third or my x. So since I didn't have those terms, I need to put zero placeholders in. So that's one bummer part about synthetic division. We can think we're doing it totally right and get an answer and be totally wrong because we forgot our zeros. Where in long division, we can kind of catch that because it's part of the process. Okay, so go ahead and finish it from there once you've put in those zeros. All right, let's check your final answer. Now make sure you've actually written out 5x to the third, right? Not just a five. Then I have my plus 10x squared, I have my minus 4x, and then I have my minus eight with my remainder minus six divided by x minus two.